Hello, everybody. Welcome to Larry's Pin Case Talk number 45. How is everybody doing on Sunday? A lot of things to talk about. Well, today is the last day for a huge discount on Jim Hines' custom-made pins. If you've been keeping up with my videos, you've been hearing about me reviewing and talking about Jim Hines' custom-made pins. And I'll show you a few. Mr. Announcer will announce them. Here is the first one. That is the uh, z Gaste, I believe. And that is the Beacon. Correct. The American Graffiti. Blue Storm. Beautiful Blue Storm. If I don't drop them all. And the Caribbean. Beautiful pen. Oh, oh, to die for all these pens. Anyway, some have Jobo nibs. Some of them have Bach nibs. Some of them have number five nibs. Some medium nibs. But today, it's getting close to the end of the month. At the end of this month, January, this huge, gigantic sale is gone and gone for good and will never come back again. So, if you're interested in a custom pin, if you never owned a custom pin, if you're a thinker, a newbie, or a pin enthusiast, now's your time to open up your pocketbook for just a few bucks and get one of these custom-made Heinz creation at a very affordable cost. And you better hurry up because uh, this one may be gone. Anyway, this Caribbean, any of these pins you've seen can be custom made to your liking. The size, the shape, the colors, the nibs, extra fine, fine, medium, broad, 1.1, 1.5 nibs can be from steel, gold, titanium, or palladium. Several choices, several options. When we talk about customized, we're talking about customized. Pin nib uh, colors. You got your basic steel nib, silver. Then you can uh, come up with colors: the black, black, blue, red orange, green, purple, and others. Good looking nibs. You've seen the black nibs, say, on uh, other uh, pins that have been out. Well, you can get that same color or the colors I just mentioned. So the making of your custom fountain pen. Hello to Luke. Hey Luke. Is well, just whatever you want it to be, it's going to be. Uh, you know, after reviewing these pins, uh, no, Jim didn't give me any of these pins, so don't think I'm just saying it to get a pin. Uh, are right up there with the big guys. Who are the big guys? Fancasi, Fancasi, Pelican, uh, Sailor, Twisby, Lamy, Edison's, Kristoff, all those guys. These pins are right in there. And he uses three different types of material. You know, epoxy resin, uh, ebonite, and another. So, you've got abundance of choices, colors. Each one of his pins, hang in there with me, are made each by Jim himself by hand. He pours the colors. And... Uh, then after it's all settled, he'll put that block on the wood on the uh, machine and hand turn it with uh, different tools to get the shapes and the colors he's looking for. It may take three to five hours to turn one uh, pin. It may take a week, depending how the pin comes out. Another thing Jim does is quality control. Hello to Frank. Hey, Frank, quality control is a must, and it should be for every pen, I think. Jim will 
check his pens to make sure that everything works well, fits right, looks right before he sends it out. And you will get it in a custom-made Heinz aluminum case, pen case, or a Heinz beautiful wooden pen uh, box. And um, I talked with Jim, and he, he's going to be putting uh, in a little velour type bag. Uh, when you use, when you order a pen and it comes in the uh, wooden pen case, so it'll make it extra protected. And the aluminum, it already comes in a, with a kind of a sponge uh, bed it lays in. But if you're checking out my videos, you'll see those two pen case boxes. Also, I think he's going to be adding two cartridges because the pens uh, can fit international short or long cartridges. They all come with an ink converter. Uh, you can get them with or without hardware. Okay, Luke wants to know how do they compare to an Edison pen. Hello, same thing. Right there with Edison. Uh, in fact, uh, he made for someone's wife a Edison, uh, is it Nova or Premier? That pink, uh, different colored ones. Let me see if I can pull it up and show you what this pen actually looks like. It's a clone. No better way to do that. It's the clone and uses the same nibs as Edison's. Uh, Edison uses Jovo nibs. So, you know, uh, but I'm not taking away anything from Edison pens. Edison makes an outstanding pen. Always have, always will be. And I'm trying to find this beautiful pen that Jim made so I can show all you guys. But yeah, it's the same thing. If you like a blue steel, you can do that. If you like a 149, you can do that. Uh, he's a custom pen maker. That's his job. He, he needs to. Here we go. I don't know if you can see that good enough. There you go. Those are the two latest ones you made for customers. So what does that remind you of, right? Yep, exactly. Uh, a lot of glare in that, so might be hard to see. There you go. There's a little bit better of it. Got the picture? That's it. Beautiful pen. So, uh, there's really nothing that Jim can't do. And Jim is one of those unknown pin makers, like many, many other unknown pin uh, makers that are out there right now that have yet to be discovered. So, Jim has fallen into the group of the elite. Now, some may not agree with me, and that's okay. That's their right. That's their privilege. But remember, we're all are different in likes and dislikes, our taste, everything. What may be right for me may not be right for you. Are Jim's the best pins on the market? Jim's is not the best pin on the market. Jim's is one of the best pins in the market with the other guys. Okay, hello to Rob, who wants to know, does Jim have any plans to offer unique filling systems? He's working on that now. In fact, uh, I just talked with Jim the other day, and he's uh, working on a piston filler, uh, like, you know, the Van Scotti, the Twisby, uh, and uh, there was another one he's working on. So, yes, the answer is yes, he is working on that. Uh, and, you know, the bands, you can get a band if you want it in silver. Uh, he makes some of his own clips. Uh and some he orders, but he uses the Jovo nibs or a Bach nib. So that's cool. Uh, now, the price may vary on nibs when you start getting to broad 1.1, 1.5. So there'll be a little price jump on that. The uh, the gold, you know, your gold nibs, your titanium, palladium nibs uh, are all well priced. Uh, under a lot of uh, the gold nibs you see today, 
uh, palladium and titanium. They're, they're, they're a good price. I was impressed. So why are these pins, custom-made pins, so affordable? Some may think they may not be worth a damn. Not any good. Uh, well, no, uh, that's certainly not true. All these are quality pins. And I wish I had all of them. Uh, but let me give you the rundown on some prices. 30% off, Mr. Announcer is going to call out the price of the pin, and then he's going to give you the 30% discount of the pin. Now, you pay for shipping and handling. Here we go with the, here we go. Okay, the Caribbean is normally $229.99. With the discount, it is $161. All right. I'll try to show you a little bit of the nib. And let me unscrew the barrel and show you the converter. Lovely, lovely pen. If you want to watch a rotting demonstration, you need to check out one of my videos. Nice wet nib. Love the pen. And here's a, a well, they're all cool. This one is the Z Gate. It is $159.99 with discount $112. $112. And what was the Caribbean? $112? Uh, $161 with the discount. How much? One? $161. $161 was the Caribbean. Whew. That's a good price. $161 with that 30% off. It was two twenty nine, right? There's the converter. Uh, the, the Caribbean was how much original? Yeah, the Caribbean is two uh, two twenty nine. Yeah. Now, come the end of January, these prices are completely gone forever. And here's a dynamite. Been getting a lot of hits on it. This is the American Graffiti. It is also one fifty nine ninety nine, which makes it one twelve with the discount. In fact, Jim has some orders and already has made one, uh, a clone of a one forty nine, beautiful pen, and this has a box fine nib in it. But it's a or is that a Jobo? Excuse me, this is a Jobo nib, fine. Beautiful writer. Next. This is the Blue Storm. It is $129.99 with discount only $91. Now, with hardware, there's an added charge. Uh, I think it could be around $120, $125. I'm not sure. But uh, great price. And this pen also comes with a converter. And this is the Jobo Medium Nip. Beautiful pen, is it not? For real. Great colors. Beautiful. And last but not least. This is the Beacon. It is also $129.99. Uh, so the discount makes it $91. $91 for a custom-made pen. Unbelievable. And this has a medium. Nib. Jowo. Beautiful pen. And it writes super nice. All of them are super nice. Now here's what Jim has done. To get this 30% off, well, you have to be a subscriber to Larry's Fountain Pens on you on YouTube or Facebook in my Fountain Pen group or my Pen Pal group. Cool. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. And these pens will be a giveaway. The American Graffiti, the Blue Storm, and the Beacon. These are all giveaways to the lucky winner. Now, how? Go ahead. Uh, hello to Javier, and yeah. he likes the pens. Hey, Javier. Great. Well, this is the time to buy. Turn your orders in now. Now, uh, talking with Jim, and uh, it'll probably be what, a three week. Uh, a three week period at this point. Yeah. yeah, but you can turn them in. You can pay for your pens. Uh, he takes Pen Pal, all major credit cards. PayPal. And he takes major credit cards, he told me as well. Uh, and uh, that'll secure your pen. So, 
let's say it's at the end of the month or the 1st of February, somewhere in there that you get them, but at least you got your price locked in and you'll get your pen. Now, these are the two pens that are going back to Jim today. No, I can't keep them. And that's all right. I'm okay with that. So, there you have it. It's all about Jim Hines custom made pens. Uh, you may disagree or disagree that uh, Hines uh, is not one of the big guys yet. Well, and you're probably right. Why is that? Well, no one's heard of Heinz custom pens. But we've all heard about the other guys. No one's heard about the unknown pin maker out there, what I'm getting at. There's an abundance of unknown pin makers that have yet to step forward. So, I was fortunate enough that one of my viewers, thank you, Francisco, that helps Jim from time to time, told me about Jim and connected us together. And the rest is history. So, I'm glad to find Jim. Jim is a laid-back guy, very polite, and he wants to make sure his customers are satisfied and happy. His name's on the pen. But like I said before, he turns each pen himself. He does, you know, he, he wants to grow. And if it goes big enough, he wants to stay at the point, well, maybe he'll have to hire another person. But he still wants hands-on those pens. He doesn't want to get so giant big that he has to have different machines and people working and have an assembly line going down. Because there's a less chance for that quality control check. And, and, and Jim is real picky on his pens. Uh, hello to Padrino. He says, one of my most prized pens is a custom pen from Scriptorium Pens. Okay. Well, whatever pen you have, if you want to clone, or you want to design your own, or mix and match your shapes, check out Heinz Custom Pens. Hello to JJ. Hey, Jay. Uh, so... There you have it. Uh, you can check out Jim's website. Uh, do you have his card by chance? I believe it is HeinzWoodCreations.com. That's what it is for right now. But Jim has been working on a brand new website for his fountain pens. And uh, he's going to try to get it up and running by this month sometime. Uh, but he's already have has had a lot of orders from viewers on making pens, and that's a good thing. Hello to Michelle. She has a custom Brooks pen with purple sparkles. Hey, Michelle. Michelle, you're that purple lover? Jim can make you some dynamite purple. You see all that purple swirls? Well, he can make that all purple for you, Michelle. And at 30% off, it's time, Michelle. It's time for all of us to get together and buy. Uh, but, th but this... Caribbean is a hundred and what it was two hundred dollars, right? Two twenty nine. Two twenty nine and right now on sale for one fifty one. One sixty one. One fifty one. Sixty one. One sixty one. Whew. What a pen. Whew. But so is this one. Whew. And look at this beautiful graffiti, American graffiti. Oh. And the blue storm that started it off and the beacon. Well, Jim has some more coming out that I will be reviewing, be uh, watching and listening and waiting for the Americana to be coming out. What a pen. Excuse me. I'm on the, uh, I'm on doing the live video. What's up? Hurry. And to Michelle, yes, about yes, your about, uh, comment yeah. about Jim's pens look wide. Sorry uh, about he, that. He does have some thinner pens. He can make them any size. These are just some uh, wider ones that he has made. Yeah, th this is a a more slimmer pen, but he can make them as slim as you want. See, this right here, if you can tell, is slimmer than this pen. 
And if you go over my videos, I put the dimensions on the pins already. And uh, I think the Blue Storm and this are about the same. This may be a little thinner, you think? No, that one's thicker. This one's thicker? Yeah. And this one's thinner? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, to me, they look. Th th this looks a little thinner, the barrel, to me. But All right. But uh, this one's thinner than the Beacon. So, but he can make them thinner. You know, I'm not into thin pins myself. Uh, I like big pins with some girth and some weight. I like big pins, 149s, king of pins. Uh, I like the feel and weight of a Van Scotti uh, Van Gogh, the Rembrandt. Uh, I, I like the Edison Colliers, nice big pins, blue steel, and another one, I forgot the name, but a nice, nice size pin, and they all write so well. I like the Pilot Vanishing Point, the click on it, great pin. Pilot Metropolitan has a nice feel to it as well. I like big pins. I like, most of all, the harder the pin is the nib. I like wet nibs. Vance Gatti, Homo Sapien, the Lava Pin, love that pin to death. Nice wet rider with that palladium nib. It's a kick. Done deal. Go ahead. Uh, Michelle asked, uh, c commenting about the w width of the pins. She just wasn't sure of the width, seeing them on screen. Uh, what are some other brand name pins that they're comparable to? Well, I'll have to pull them out. If you give me about half a second, I will uh, let you know. Uh, let me just pull out these two real quick. Here's the Noodler's Conrad. Of course, you got a thinner barrel, right? And that the Conrad is probably what you're looking at right here. That's a way thinner barrel than the Graffiti. He could make it the size of a Conrad. See how thin that barrel is right there compared to this one? Okay, she actually likes the wider pins then. The white pen. Okay. And then here is a fountain pen revolution to click. That's way narrower than this pen. So there's that. I hope that helped you some. Uh, I'm trying to find some others for you. Let's put it against Alami. Alami's, there you go. The Alami and the graffiti. Lamy would be, well, probably a maybe about the same size, a little girthier, maybe. The cap is more girthier than the graffiti, for sure. Uh, we'll put the Delta against this one. Way girthier, bigger pin. Uh, here's that Pilot. Vanishing point to give you a, a rough idea. You can just see that right here. When you say the uh, the barrel is about the same, maybe about the same, wouldn't you think? Pretty close. Yeah, I think that's about as close as I'm going to get it. Uh, the Ling Lang, what do you call that thing? Lingmo. Lingmo. I know I'm pathetically horrible on names. Oh, well, get over it, everybody. That's me. The, uh, the, uh, the barrel on the pen is way thinner than the graffiti. But you get the idea, right? Uh, if you want them 149 size, you can do it. If you want a ping of pin size, he can do it. If you want them blue steel size, the Premier, the Nova, he can do it. If you want them Vance Gatti size, Pelican size, he can do it. If you want them the size of a Twisby, he can do it. Whatever size, shape, cigar shapes, thin, girthy, medium, big fat, he can do it. Size nibs, he, he can get just about any nib. Uh, to Michelle, yes, he has uh, received several orders from our viewers, and we're very grateful for that. And to all the viewers, thank you. Thank you for believing what I'm saying, because here's an opportunity for each and every one of us to buy a custom-made pen. Okay? That is cool. 
Uh, I've been in the pen business now a little, what, three years? I've never seen a discount this huge, 10%, 15%. It's a usual discount. So I've seen what you got going on here. Uh, JJ, I was thinking of having him do me a desk set where I could have travel caps as well so that I can use the set of pens for both. That would be cool. Yeah. Get in touch with Jim. Tell him what you want. He'll get it. Now, let me tell this to y'all. When I, when I, I'm going to mention something, so don't get all freaky on me and go present bananas. I'm going to mention a pen name. It's called a kit pen. What are your thoughts about kit pens? Leave me your comments below. It's important because... What I'm going to show you soon is a pen that's going to blow you away. At least it blew me away. The pen, on, the price tag on that pen is four to five bills, four to five hundred dollars. Hey, that's okay. It's a custom-made pen. You spend thousands of dollars on Vansconti, Pelican, Sailor uh, pens, right? Sure. But I just thought I'd throw that out. I don't want to give it all away till I have it in my hands to show you. Uh, he also make ballpoint pens, roller ball pens. Jim's a pin maker. Jim's a custom pin maker. Feel what I'm saying. This is what he does. His passion, his heart. Uh, no, he's not charging an arm and a leg for a pen. And, you know, the labor, there is none. It's just Jim working his tail off for what he believes in, what he loves, what his dream is. Remember, Edison Penn started out the same way. Okay, uh, hello to Nomad, welcome. And to answer your question, you can go to HeinzWoodCreations.com or his email is HeinzWoodCreations at gmail.com and that's H-I-N-Z-E. And then you can uh, uh, get the information about getting a graffiti from there. Also, shipping out of the U.S. I've had questions on the U.K. It's uh, in other places in that area. It's $35 shipping. That's all you pay for your shipping fee. Not a bad price. Right? Go ahead. Uh, JJ is talking about the kit pins. Seen some bad ones, but some good ones. Uh, Jim had one that was, a, what do you call it, the dragon pin? That was really, really nice looking. Oh, well, okay, JJ. That's it. You got it. The dragon pen made, the, the hardware is done in sterling silver. It has the dragon, beautiful detail, beautiful craftsmanship. I didn't know it was a kid pen until Jim told me, Larry, that's a kid pen. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, kid pens have a bad name, and a lot of fountain pen people hate kid pens. They won't even let you put a kid pen on a fountain pen uh, group. In my groups, you can put kid pens. In my groups, you can put a roll of ball of bullet point pens. Why not? It's what you love. It's what you use. And I like to combine everybody's passion and love for what they love together. You know, I'm not going to knock it. You know, do I use ballpoint pens? Very seldom, but I do. Uh, I love the gel pen. I do use the roller ball from time to time. I love a gel pen. I did a video on that. The ones I really like are the paper made gels. They're the closest to a true fountain pen ink that I have come to. Really a nice experience in writing. Also, affordable pens. People, I'm with you on this. I'm on a strict budget. Since I'm no longer able to work, I'm totally disabled, I have to really save, save, save. So, pens under $20. Can you find good pens? Yeah, you can. You know, Jin Hao has some great pens. Uh, uh, Wingsong. Uh, what is that? Lang, Lang, Limo. Limo is another good one. Um, I'm trying to think... Uh, I believe the Lamy Safari might be under 20. I'm not sure. Probably not. But uh, Noodlers uh, has a good pen, the Ahab, for one. But there's always Bauer, Hero, 
uh, what I like about the uh, Junhao pins, I love the 159 the best because it's fat, chunky, and girth, and I like weight. And they write fine right out of the box. But what I like about 159s, 750s, and 450s is that I can change the nibs out to a number six nib. Now, those nibs are friction fit. They're not the unscrew kind. That's okay. Go ahead. Uh, Michelle says uh, her first couple of safaris were uh, some Amazon warehouse deals. The boxes were damaged. Uh, but the pins were fine. They were under $20. Cool. Javier likes the Pilot Varsity. Yes, a nice pin. And JJ says the recommends the Wingsung 601. There you have it. So there's plenty of affordable pins out there for the pin thinker that's thinking about fountain pins. For the newbie that's just coming into fountain pins. And for all of us pin enthusiasts, there's something for everybody out there. So, yeah, that's really exciting, man. I'm, you know, I, I, I love it where there's affordable pins, you know, and I'm putting these Heinz custom-made pins right in your lap with this huge, giant discount. Now you're able to buy a custom-made pin the way you want it. All you got to do is get online, email Jim, Tell him what you want. Leave him your phone number. He'll call you if y'all need to collaborate and talk. But once you pay for that pin, you know that pin is yours and will be coming, knocking on that door soon. Cool? You know, I yeah, I, I am totally drama on this and overexcited and screaming and shouting, whatever, because... I've never seen a price for a custom pin 30% off. Have you? A custom pin? Go nibs, uh, palladium, and titanium, or more, uh, but they're still affordable, affordable nibs. The choices, or abundance of choices. So, you know, I'm blessed to have met Jim. I'm blessed that Jim has entered the pin world. Now, let me get something straight that I've made a mistake on. Go ahead first. Uh, JJ says that Costco has some notebooks that are good. We'll have to check that out. And then uh, Luke says, you should be Jim's salesman. You're convincing me. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Tell Jim that. But anyway, um, I made a mistake on a pin show. Jim is not going to be February at the St. Louis Pin Show because it's in June, I believe. Eh, made a mistake. Sorry, Jim. Ah, eh. so, and then he'll be in Dallas in September, and I think he's going out to the LA show not to sell pins, just to check it out and meet some people. So, if you're in St. Louis, check out Jim. If you're in LA and you happen to see him, tell him hi and. If you go to the Dallas Pin Show, check out Jim. Or am I going to be there, Mr. Announcer? What do you think? Oh, yes. Mm. Will I buy any Jim pins? What do you think? If you hadn't already bought them all by then. Mm. I'm struggling over this pin. I'm struggling over this pin. And these pins. Oh. Buy me these pins! Oh! They sing. I've been riding with these pins for a couple of two or three weeks. But these pins even longer, I think. I probably had them for about a month, and I've been mentioning them. But these pins for about two or three weeks, maybe. Uh, wow. The, all these pins get the wow factor from me. Wow. Beautiful. Feel great in the hands. Look great. Fountain pens. And they can come with a sterling silver nib uh, band or a regular steel band with the hardware. Uh, now, the sterling silver nib is fine, but for me it's harder to clean. I'm okay 
with a Fender band, this other band, or even without a band. I just like clips on my band. Why? Because I put them in my pocket. Why? Because <clears throat> for me, as clumsy as I am, without a clip, they may roll off my desk or table and may break or depending what material you use, different kinds of resins, some are more easier to crack than others. Now, some of the pins don't polish up super glossy. That's how I like my pins. But there's nothing wrong with these pins. Is this a deal break for me not to buy them? No. It just depends on the type of material you choose. And uh, you can uh, be sure to ask Jim and uh, if you want that resin that gets a real high polish, the kind Edison used and the rest of them, just tell Jim and he'll get it. But I believe that material is more easier to crack if you drop it on a hard surface. JJ says you need a t-shirt that says will work for pens. Okay, Jim Hines, I will work for pens. Jim Hines, I will work for pens. Help me. Oh. I just had a heart failure. Okay. Anyway. We'll make him a piece of cardboard with that on it so he can stand out on the street corner. Yeah, that that's a good idea. You know, people, uh, spare change. I work for money. Supposedly. Well, I'll entertain you for a pen. How's that? All right. So that's enough of Jim Hines' pens. I'm sure you're tired of me rambling on all the drama, all the... Ugh. But that's all you're going to get from me because I'm excited. I'm hype. I'm in it. I'm pumped up. And I'm knocking them out because I'm Larry the Pin Bug Guy and I'm here to stay. I've been asked questions about... Uh, do I connect with all the reviewers? No. I'm like in left field, and a lot of them are in their own togetherness. But that's okay. Hello to Francisco. And hey, yeah, Francisco. You, yeah, we'll be there tonight. Francisco, baby. That's coming up next. Hang on. Don't go away. But uh, that's okay, because I'm, I'm not here for reviewers. I'm here for viewers. If the reviewers want to be part of my world, God bless them. You're welcome to it. Let's all unite and be one and be strong and work together. So my hand, I extend to all reviewers. How's that? Uh, Troy LaPlante and Jason the Squirrel, we do a lot of communicating. They're cool. If you haven't ever watched their videos, check them out. They're great videos. Really, really good videos. And Jason, I love when he does his road trips. Real nice guy. And same with Troy. Just a real nice guy. You'll love him. Just good folks. Just regular people. That we all have one thing in common. Fountain pens. Right? True. Now, I want to let Mr. Announcer tell you about the upcoming event this evening because we're both going so tell them about it mr announcer well tonight we have the pleasure of visiting with uh i believe it's linda from van s pens she will be at k's bar and restaurant in northwest dallas this evening at 6 30. Uh, so we will be there a couple of uh, other people will be there i believe jim is going to be there as well jim will be there as well and to the Fort Worth Pin Club. Are you out there, Fort Worth Pin Club? Hello, hello. Fort Worth Pin Club rocks. Janice and the rest of you, you going to be there? Frank, going to be there? Oh, is it Lisa? Lisa. We, sorry, we get that wrong every time. Okay, I didn't say it. I answered it. Lisa. Lisa, 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 Lisa. Thank you. Lisa Vaness. Lisa Vaness. Lisa Frank's Vaness. Gonna be there. Frank will be there. Okay. Lisa Vaness. Don't kill me, Lisa. I'm sorry. In fact... Lisa, if you're listening to my video, don't forget my ink. Or it'd be too late because you're already in Dallas. Boo. Anyway, I ordered from uh, Lisa uh, some of my favorite inks. Are you ready? I'm going to give you some favorite inks. Monteverde Olive Bean Green Ink. Here's how I got started. A viewer and a friend of mine, just a real nice guy, Neil. Thank you, Neil. Send me 
a sample of that ink. Whew. Plus, Neil also bought me a Keras Customs with a titanium nib, same color of ink. Go ahead, Jake. Uh, Frank says his wife will be there as well. And Francisco's pretty sure she brought the bottle of ink. So that got me hooked. I love that ink. But funny thing is I've been out of that. Well, I just ran out the other day. I, I had, I ordered two more samples. I buy a lot of sample ink because, you know, I like the ink. I love the ink, but I hadn't bought a bottle. And I want to make sure. So I was sure about that. And Robert Oster Soda Pop. Love Oster's Inc. Robert Oster, if you're listening to me on this video, you rock, my friend. Keep up those supreme, dynamite, exciting, bold, rich colors of Robert Oster's Inc. No, he didn't pay me to say that. I'm saying it because I just dig the ink. Can you dig it? Peace. Go ahead. Uh, JJ's, uh, all he can find in the olivine is the 30 milliliter, so he's going to go to the Van Ness Pen Store. Uh, Frank says he's looking forward to getting uh, Noodler's Crayfish Food Black Erase, some whiteboard ink. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. That was the first time I, I've heard about that. Now, let me move on to something. Lava soap. Uh, I got this from one of my viewers. And uh, because I've been looking for something I can help get the ink off my hands. I, what I've been using is just bleach. I have a spray bottle of bleach and bleach my hands. And then I wash them with soap and it gets it off. Then I've used other kind of uh, jars of uh, ink remover that I bought through other pen stores. And it works okay. Not great because I still have to use the bleach a little bit. So, I've tried this out, and about after three to four or five washings, that ink will come off, depending how long you let it sit, and depending on the ink. The base steak blue came off pretty good, in fact. It was either at the two or three washings. The, the deatriment ink took about three to five washings, but it just depends on the ink and how long it stays on your hands. So, this stuff, you know, I'm digging it. Uh, I ordered one off eBay. So, I'm going to stick with this. And occasionally, I do have to use the bleach regardless to get really a, all the ink off. But occasionally, not all the time. But this works pretty darn good. Like I like the stuff. It works well for me. Michelle uses hand sanitizer and then dish soap. Huh. I've used that and it works uh, depending on the ink. Because on my desk, I'll keep a bottle of hand sanitizer and uh, <clears throat> like I got ink on here a little bit and I'll get ink down here and I'll use that hand sanitizer and it works pretty good. Uh, JJ has another product and I've not seen this one so I'm not sure about the pronunciation. Red Duran, he says it works really well. Never heard of that one. Huh. On the comments below, email me that or send it to me. I'd like to check that out. So I thought I'd mention that. Now, uh, I will be coming up with a uh, bag review shortly, and it's going to be on a different kind of messenger bag that uh, ones that I've used. So that's going to be coming up. Uh, a pen, the is it the BBS pen or something like that, and that's going to be coming up. I have I have an abundance of pens that are going to be coming up because when I got sick with the flu. They were just stagnant, just waiting. So now it's time to get them done. And I've got journals to, to get up. The Hobo Nietzsche. I'm going to give you my take on that. And I just got some sticky stuff on it. Good thing I got a cover. But uh, there it is. And how I have mine set up is a bullet journal. And it works well for me. Yep. Um... Uh, what else? Oh, I need to show you a pen that a friend of mine bought. It's called the Heinz Mystic. And it's got a gold nib in it. Medium gold nib. 
So there we have it. Francisco says that Lisa also is going to have some Bainu pins. Oh, some Bainu pins? Yeah. Speaking of Bainu pins. Speaking of those little rascals. Bainu, 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 Bainu. I do have some Bainu pins. But I don't have them where they are conveniently out. But I, yeah, I do have some Bainu pins. And uh, I did talk uh, with, uh, oh, I forgot their name. Uh, but uh, they come out of Russia. So they're more expensive to ship to the U.S. Beautiful pins. Okay, JJ is asking about the... Uh the uh, mystic pen from Jim uh -huh. uh, is it's blue. It is blue and black. Uh, is it made of ebonite? Yeah, I think it is. I have to look up the material because I have forgotten what it's made of. But if it's not made of ebonite, he can sure make it. He uses three types of materials, and uh, uh, I wouldn't plan on showing it. But uh, uh, I did ask Doug to pay, and Doug let me bring him to show it. But that's beautiful, isn't it? And it's got the, the gold nib, medium. Joe old gold nib on it, two-tone. But I'll find that out when I see Jim tonight. Because uh, I do not think I have it written down here. Mm. If I do, I don't have it in front of me, and I don't want to have to go through the whole process of checking out every book I have on pens, because that would totally bore you to death. All right. So, any questions? Sorry, that's a stupid iPad falling down. Uh, no. Long story short, I do not have that. So, I don't have the answer. Maybe Francisco might know, but if not, I'll ask Jim tonight. Yeah, I think Mr. Announcer and I will be there a bit earlier so we can eat. Uh, since we're both diabetics, we don't eat late. Uh, so we try to eat between that 4 and uh, 5.30. So that should do that. So, oh, on Block, blotting paper is what I've been using. Great stuff. Good stuff. Because my favorite paper, I can tell you now, honestly, of all the papers. Go ahead. Uh, Francisco wants you to bring one of your Mont Blancs for him to try tonight. I'll do that. Uh, the favorite paper that I enjoy the most, and which I write on my pen pals with, is mostly... Tomo River Paper 52 G's. Love it. Love the thin paper. I love the way the nib ink works so well with this paper. For me, there's no other. No question. Second best for me is life paper. And then I like that. Was that co 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 Um, uh, co 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 is that no, no, not Kaweco, not Kaweco, uh, Kokuro, Kokuro, yeah, yeah, that's some good paper as well. I do use Rodia, uh, dot uh, grid when I do my writing reviews, and you know, I'm thinking as soon as I finish that book up, I'll change to a different band because I can and I want to, and uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the kind of guy that likes to do my own thing, I don't like playing follow the leader, that's not my thing. And, you know, I can be an outcast as a reviewer because if you're not in the groove, in the group, and you don't agree or, or disagree with some people, like you're an outcast or you don't know what you're talking about. And that's cool because I'm going to do my thing Larry the Pink Bug way. Francisco asks if you've tried the Seven Seas paper. Yes, I have. Uh, well, I don't have it with me. In fact, I, I'm out. Uh, it's put up. I've used it. Also, I've used the, uh, here's some, the cafe, and uh, 
the uh, Nami, I get this from the Nami Paper Company, made in Japan, right here. Good stuff. Great stuff. I ordered me uh, a new book. Uh, I like the size of this paper. It uh, works really well for me. It comes in this cover. But I, I ordered me a little cheap plastic cover to go over it. I've had this book. And uh, I can show you some of what I, how I keep it. I, I write on my pens in here, the inks and stuff. And look how pretty that is on that paper. Uh, and uh, I do have a blotting. And it does come with a blotting paper as well. But here's some that I did earlier. But it just works real well. Love the stuff. Uh, and uh, I am almost out of this paper. So I have enough for maybe six days. I do one page at a time. Sometimes I may do three or four pages, whatever the mood hits me. So love this paper. I think this book's about 16 bucks. Well worth the money. Uh, Frank says if anybody has a modern Esther book, he wants to see it tonight. Oh yeah, yeah. Frank, being that Esther book, I, I I have to see it because I've heard so many bad reviews on the Esther book. And then uh, JJ has got some Claire Fontaine notebooks at Marshalls. Is that the uh, clothing and houseware store you're talking about, JJ? Yes, okay, that, that is it. We'll have to check that out, too. Yeah. Uh, I've got just an abundance of journals. And uh, I do like moleskin. I know some people are going to go nuts. They hate moleskin. Uh, depending on the size of nib and the witness, uh, it works okay with a fountain pen. Not the greatest. There's some show through. You see that a lot, even with great paper. But there can be some major bleed throughs. But I, I, I do like moleskin. It's, it's cool. Uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, let me show you my life journal. You have to excuse it. Lighter color. I got bleach on it. I was cleaning the table once. Oops. But uh, I log all my inks in here. And I use a color ring too. But uh, I just like the life notebook to keep these inks in. Because I love going back and reviewing my inks and see the inks I do want and what I don't want. Uh, and it helps me uh, to let me know how that color looks a week ago, two weeks ago. Uh, so, good stuff. Good paper. You know, the phone has to start ringing all of a sudden, right? So, there you go. But it... That's what I use this life notebook for. Great stuff. And if you're nasty, you can pronounce this one. Uh, Nimasine. Now, here's one notebook paper that I forgot to mention that is good. Nimasine. I love the paper as well. And uh, I've used it. And it works really well. I have had no issues with the paper. But it's really nice paper. Uh, seven millimeter paper. You get uh, 80 sheets. So, yeah, that's that's a nice one. Uh, Francisco asks, are Life and Apica the same company? Good question. I have to check. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm probably going to be wrong, but I don't think so. Uh, I've used uh, Apica paper. And it's, I like the notebook. Uh, one of the papers that I'm not really digging or feeling is the Claire Fontaine paper. I, I just, I don't know. It's just something about it that just didn't hit me well. Uh, what I like about the Rodia paper, I do like their stuff. You know, I do like the different colors. They come out with, and uh, I do like the, the cream color papers, and it works well with fountain pen and ink. I do like the line paper the best, so you know it just works real well. 
and I like the tablet forms the best for me. Okay, another question from, and hello, Greasy Pete. Uh, do you use any lubricated inks? He's tried some on some difficult pens with good results. Yeah, uh, mention me the inks you use. Uh, some of the diamonds and the noodlers are, work pretty well. On the Verde, too. I try to stay with the lubricated inks as much as possible uh, because they say it helps your pen. So, some say not true, some say true. So, uh, there you go. JJ recommends Noodler's Rattler Eel yeah. Red. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there are some Noodler's that, that do, and Monteverde, that's right. Yep, yep. Uh, I love Monteverde inks. Great colors. Uh, and some other, well, you know, some of my other favorite inks are, uh, you know, Diamine and... Uh, Private Reserve. Uh, I like the Blackstone uh, line. I haven't got the Barrier Reef yet. I need to. It looks like a hot blue, but I've been getting into other colors. I, I like to get some greens, some different kind of blues, oranges and yellows and reds, uh, purple. Ah, I mean, I can't keep the suspense anymore. Here's what I've gotten. Ta-da! Ta-da! Are you feeling it? I have not used it yet. And why is that? Because I'm waiting for a pen to be delivered to a certain store that I'm going to be buying the pen from. And then I'm going to ink that pen up with a whole new cool presentation. I am a Beetle Freak, Beetle fan from long ago. So I've got abundance of Beetle albums and CDs and pictures. And I will be putting all this together to present this beautiful Mont Blanc Sergeant Pepper's fountain pen. It comes with a 14K nib. So, the place I'm going to get them is right now out, and they've been shipping with Mont Blanc, and they still haven't sent any. So, that's a take on that. And God knows I've been saving every penny, and I've, I've just broken away so I can get some inks from Venice, because I needed them. Because I use that ink a lot. So, that's that. Yeah, I want those other pens. I want to get, I want to get a vanishing point. The white one, I'm a Star uh, Wars freak. And I want to put it with my Yoda pen. And I want to get some other Star Wars pens. But that white one reminds me of the Stormtroopers. Can you dig it? Can you feel it? With a medium nib? Yeah, got to have it. Uh... Also, another one I want to get, uh, I want to get the 700 Twisby with the, I think that's the rose gold medium nib. Um, I like to get another Noodler's uh, Conrad. Maybe that yellow or that orange and black. Uh, you know, I like the way Noodler's write. Okay. Uh, I, I love their flex nibs. Uh, for me, it's just enough for me to enjoy. Some other people, you know, just not feeling it because they didn't flex enough for them. I hear you. But I don't do a lot of flexing. So uh, these pens work really great for me. And they lay down the ink. And I just love the Noodler's Ahab and the Conrad. Love the music nib now. Yep. Those are some of my favorites. Uh JJ recommends the Noodler's Safety Pen. And Francisco says he's looking at a 3776, either the uh, Burgundy or the Lavand. La or I guess it made the Lavender. Okay, I saw my 3776 uh, pen last year, I believe. It was a Burgundy. Uh, the, the nib... 
I want it was supposed to be medium, but it was more of a fine. And you know, the Japanese nibs are different than the Western nibs, of course. So I think I got a, or was it a broad nib? I think I got one red one and one blue one. But I didn't really care for the broad. There were great pens, nothing wrong with them, but I just wasn't feeling feeling it. Hardly ever used them, and I sold them. So I'm thinking about getting another one down the road some, and it will be, I'm not sure, a music nib or just a 3776 medium nib again. Uh, yeah. JJ has the 3776 with a black uh, with rhodium trim and the UEF nib. How do you like it? Is it a wet nib? Because my pens weren't all that wet. So that was one of the turnoffs. Uh, could I have made them wetter? Yeah, I could have. But I don't really mess around with gold nibs. I was going to send it off to a nib meister, but I just wanted to get these other pins, so I gave up these other pins to buy other pins, and then those other pins got stolen. So, there's a Van Scotti uh, Charleston, or I forgot the name of it, beautiful pin I want. I had it in my hands and got stolen. Uh, on my wish list, also, well, I had a whole, I had about seven pins on the wish list. Uh, I do want to get very much so the Van Scotti Rembrandt, the one with that uh, olive green look, the, the GI green look on it. I, I like that color with a medium nib. Uh, I love the Van Scotti uh, Van Gogh's a lot. Really nice. I sold quite a few of them to get other pins. I got a couple left and I really miss them. Go ahead. Uh, JJ says the uh, the ultra extra fine nib is uh, dry. Uh, it's a needle point fine. Yeah. And uh, he says he has tiny handwriting. JJ, I'm kind of with you. I, I prefer the fine because I don't have to concentrate as much on the writing. Yeah, I can't handle no needle point. Eh, ah, gone. Uh, fine is okay as long as it's wet. Yeah, but you're right. The op, the Rembrandt op, that's it, that's it. That's the one I want. La, 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 la. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, JJ says the older Noodler's GI Green was the color before it switched. Oh, okay. That was cool. Well, all right, folks. Well, it's time to get off because I've got to get ready for a review. So, hey, it's been a great day chatting with you guys and gals until next Sunday stay safe stay healthy don't get the flu it's going around bad it, it's a killer flu this year and thank you again for all your support your comments your contributions and helping me keep Larry's fountain pens alive and well I, I couldn't do it without you guys you guys are the key to any reviewer Without you guys, there's no need for a reviewer, right? Wrong. Without custom-made pen makers like Jim Hines, you wouldn't have a custom-made pen. Yeah, you can have other nice pens, but not custom. Well, okay. Thank you. Want to read that comment? Uh, JJ's going to email that Red Duran link to you. All right. Well, it's time to go. Or I'll be here all day long. Got to get ready for the next review. Got to get cleaned up for this evening. Peace, God bless, and I'll talk to you guys later. Rock and roll, dudes.